And welcome back to Career Build Series, episode 156. And so I've been busy. Uh, we're in the test world here. I've uh, been doing a bunch of work on Katie Did. And so I've been doing all this work to try to get um, the radio tracking system up and running. I also started doing some Lua work. Um, had a struggle where I uh, misconnected the GPS and it took me forever to figure it out. So let's kind of look at some of my work here. So turn on the master power. As you can see, our autopilot panel has been re uh, replaced with a Lua uh, autopilot panel. So we have autopilot master, we have um, bearing radio, um, we have um, uh, station keeping, we have bearing heading, we have uh, heading hold, we have altitude hold. Uh, over here we have a new bearing panel. Um, I want to add in some arrows here. I have to screw around to get that to work. I'm having problems with the code. So I'm going to put a couple arrows here so I can do this multi-page multi, uh, multi -page here. Uh, this will show the bearing to the station, the distance to the station, uh, and then the time to the station. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get uh, some stuff set up here. And uh, I'll do some testing. But this is uh, this is really uh, improving. So I also move some panels around. Uh, make sure I can enter this in. I Okay, so I need to put that on my to-do list that that needs a backlight. So that is, what is that? Altitude hold. Uh, altitude hold, backlight. All right, so move some stuff around. So this was annoying me forever. Oh, but let's turn on the um, autopilot there and get the, um, yeah, I'll turn on the gyro. Uh, this has been annoying me for a while. My heading hold was up here, so I had to look up. So now I enter in my radio homing frequency. So eventually I want to put that on one of these pages. I'm trying to reduce some of the space. I'm kind of uh, heavy on... I'm, I'm kind of uh, losing space here. So let's go ahead and let's come on out. So let's go ahead and put an altitude hold of 200 feet, and we'll enter that in. Uh, we need the autopilot master on. Then we can click altitude hold. We need those two conditions to climb us up. Uh, let's go to a heading of 090, so let's go ahead and put that in. That's our heading hold now is 090. And we'll go ahead and we'll click heading hold. And now, as you can see, we turn to 090, so heading hold is working. Um, if I go ahead and I put in my waypoint, as you can see, I have a waypoint over to my right. So I can click bearing heading, that takes precedence. I can also deselect my heading hold if I want, but I don't have to. I can keep the heading hold in there. So now, as you can see, this point's there. Uh, I can put in a new heading, 194. 194. And then if I deselect the bearing hold, as you can see, we stay on it. Now if I do um, station keeping, it's going to automatically fly me over to there with um, pitch and roll, and it will hold the position just like it would normally um, over a rescue area. So while that's doing that, um, as you can see, distance, anything under a mile is going to be zero. Um, it's going to show us um, anything under a minute is going to show us zero. If we're within a nautical mile, we're going to get a flashing green light to tell us that we are within a uh, nautical mile. Um, and so let's go ahead. I changed my lights. So now before I couldn't really reach my lights, now I can reach them better. Um, I also have an emergency battery now within reach. That allowed me to do some stuff in the back here. Um, I've really been annoyed by that panel being behind the rope, so that's now moved. Um, that went there. Uh, it will go, it will kind of buck forward and back. That's just so that it has enough. Um, that's so that it has enough pitch and roll to maintain in 100% wind. So I might do something with that so that it decreases its. Um, Essentially clamps it differently if the wind is down, but I just haven't done that yet. And this is um, normally not this hard to get this thing to push in, but we are flicking back and forth. So let's go ahead and open this up. We'll raise this up. Uh, the other feature that I added last time, which is working now well, is the um, is the radio function. So what I can do here is let's fly out of here. Let's put Triton out. And so we'll go ahead and we'll launch Triton. All right, so now Triton has a radio position. Let me make sure all this is electrified. I think I uh, did infinite electricity last time. I don't want to do that this time. So let's see. Um, this has electricity, and that's all I need, I think. 
Yep. Okay. So we're all we're all set there. Let's spawn this in. And I'll just quickly go down underneath and I'll set that up. So um, there is a GPS underneath the pad that allows me to uh, direct directly to the pad. I'm, I have to move it a little bit. I think it needs to go to the right here um, for some reason. This is, or I can put in a correction factor. I might do that. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly just start uh, start this up. And so we'll have Triton go in here and um, we can track to it with um, Katie. So Triton has a huge antenna that has a 20 kilometer range. Uh, Katie has a, a small antenna. That small antenna only has a 100 meter range. So you're going to add them together. So as long as we're within the 20 kilometers essentially of uh, Triton's large antenna, we should be able to pick up the signal. And that will allow us to um, home in right on Triton. And so before we had to kind of guess where it was or cheat and look. Um, and especially because Triton will be moving, especially with Katie did, um, we want to be able to um, we want to be able to home directly to Triton wherever it is. So this is also going to be useful for home base. I'll be able to put a radio antenna at home base, and um, we can also put a GPS there. And so if I change the frequencies, that will allow me to go to the different areas. All right, so let's move here, and so we're just going to throw this off on um, autopilot. Maybe I'll throw some fog in so we can find it in the fog. That's another thing is even if we know where it is, if it's foggy, it's going to be tough to find. So go ahead, and I'm going to go, and we will put in a course here. Okay, just put something in there. That's a good 10 kilometers out, and so let's add a waypoint. Let's turn on the autopilot. Uh, I want to go upstairs really quick, and um, I forget what my frequency is, so I need to look at it. Uh, what is the frequency? Let me see if it's in there. I, might, I can't remember if I put it in. Okay, so I have no frequency in there, so I'm going to pick a number. So let's do 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Enter that in. Okay, so let's go back to Katie. All right. And so as you can see, Katie's still station holding. I need to drop myself to stationary before I go up there. All right, so let's go up into Katie. And um, as you can see, rock solid now. Takes a little while for it to get rock solid. That's again so that it can uh, operate in the wind. So we could go and we could sock ourselves in with the um, fog. Let's add a little bit of um, nighttime to make it even harder. Um, let's go ahead and turn on some lights in Katie's strobes. Now, uh, oops, excuse me. Uh, nap beacon strobes. Um, I need to turn my light on in here. All right, there we go. So a little eerie with the <laughs> fog is ridiculous. Um, it's all fogged inside here. Let me decrease the fog just a hair. Okay. Uh, all right. So now what we want to do is let's type in the frequency of um, the radio frequency. So one, two, three, four. Enter that in. All right, so now when I go to, um, let's shut off station keeping. Let's go to BR. As you can see, we now have a 218. It's about um, a mile. I, I have this rounding. Um, you know, I don't know if I'll keep it rounding, but it is at the moment. So then what we want to do is we want to go to, hmm, I don't know what's bearing, why it's not turning. Oh, I have heading. Hold on. Will that go to 215 is the question. Do I need both of them on? That's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to have to manually go. Um, that will show me the frequency. I might have to just... I have to figure out what's up with that. So I screwed something up on that. That's fine. So 213. 213. Uh, two, Alright, so we can do it that way. And we can put a heading hold in there. And then let's get moving. It actually might be alright. Um... Because it's not much of a turn off here. No, it needs it needs it, my intervention, so that's fine. So we'll go looking for Triton. Let's sock the fog in even more again. And so we're going to be looking for Triton. A lot of fog at the cockpit doesn't help with that red light, especially. But as you can see, um, going out towards there. And so currently it's showing six minutes because we're not going that fast. 
Um, as, as I speed up here, you'll see now we're less than a minute, so. Alright, so we're within a mile, as you can see. Less than a minute away. Uh, I'm also going to go down to, let's go down to 75 feet. Alright, so I need to be careful that I don't pass it. 197. Okay, I need to change my heading. Okay, we're getting really close, so I need to um, start slowing down. So I'm going to slow down here. I'm going to change my course again, because we're really close to it. So up. I'm going to do that 100 times. Now, 84. I need to fix this so it automatically tracks there. It's just um, presently, it's going to do that. What is a 1, 12 maybe, one, one 2. It's, it's, uh, it's because it's moving. So, uh, you know, I sh this should follow it directly, but it's not. So that's causing me a little bit of a problem there. Because normally this would just track it the whole way. Um, I have to manually enter it in, um, so that's just something I have to fix. Alright, so we're getting close here where the number's stopping. Um, I'm looking for Let me go ahead and unsock some of this fog here um, so I can see Triton a little bit better. Okay, so there's Triton. You can see it down below us. I knew we were close. Um, altitude hold. Where are we at on altitude here? Why are we way up here in altitude? This might not be connected. That could be the problem. Um, I'm going to help it. And I'm going to help get us down. So, some of the systems aren't perfect. This is the first real big test I've done. So, Alright, there we go. Alright, so altitude hold is set back up. Let's see where Katie is. Or where Triton is. Let's go ahead and just drop out some of this fog. I want to find it. All right, there it is. See, 12 o'clock. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, 194. And so uh, it would be less annoying once it automatically will maintain that heading. I just, um, something's up that I have to fix. Um, I had to change all the numbers around. I had to do a bunch of stuff. So uh, it's been kind of a little bit, bit of a pain to get it all set up. Um, so let's go to 10. I'm just kind of homing in on my own. And then I don't know why this, see my altitude needs to be fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and I will put that on my list. Uh, let's see, fix altitude hold. Alt hold. So something's up with that. Um, as you can see, it won't maintain my altitude. So I think because it's uh, not lit up, I probably, because I moved a lot of bunch of stuff, there's a reasonable chance that um, I screwed up the... Um, oh, come on, don't crash, you dope. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the autopilot here. And so now um, I need the modes on to operate the autopilot. So what I can do is, if I want my gyro, I have to deselect the modes, turn on autopilot, will give me my gyro, and um, I can also click that and shut everything off and control it by hand if I have an emergency and I need to. So let's go um, spots and landing, and that will help a little bit. I'm just going to match the speed. So right now, about a heading of one, uh, 200. Let's put that in there, 200. Now we'll go heading hold. All right, and now I can maintain my heading. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a landing on um, on there. Let me actually try station keeping. Okay, I need that on or else it's gonna, it's not gonna operate fine. Uh, 75. Altitude hold, let me put that in to make sure it's trying to at least maintain the altitude. Okay, so now we're coming in. Uh, I'm going to just back off on the prop a little bit. Okay, we stopped. It stopped because it took me forever to f figure it out. So, um. All right, so it is station keeping, as you can see. So it's going to come right over the pad. Now it's moving. All right, it's going to go in. So let's 
go down to um, 60 feet. And I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, prop to help it along. So it is moving again. So we know it goes about 19 knots. So as you can see, I'm going 19 knots. And so we're matching the speed. If I tap just a little bit more, um, the pitch will take care of... So pretty much my prop is, um, is taking care of 19 knots of the speed. And my pitch is only having to do one knot of speed. So it's having to do very little. And that's what we want. Uh, we want it to do very little. Okay, let's go down to 40 feet. I need to figure out an altitude for this, um, for the um, helipad. So as you can see, we're right over the helipad now. This is going to continue to try to keep it, so let's do 35. And I'll grab uh, an altitude so I know where we're at here. Uh, 25 is probably better. Okay, so right there. So this is going to try to go right on the pad. So the lights come on as I go over the distance sensor. And I'm going to just kind of manually drop it down. But as you can see, I'm, you know, I don't really want to do auto landings. It's not really my favorite. I would rather land myself. Um, but as you can see, this is, shows the efficacy of it kind of helping me. And, um, you know, in rough conditions, this is going to help me find it. This is going to help me, um, you know, align. And then at any point, I can take over. But... Um, you know, so it's nice to have a radio system now. I can track and um, follow Triton. Yeah, we're very close to landing here. So I'm kind of fighting the station, keeping it's doing it for me, and I'm trying to fight it as well. So um, it's trying to do its own thing. I'm trying to do my thing here. Oh, wow. A, I hit the prop. And we're back up. I hit the prop on the uh, on the ship. All right, so I can shut off my modes as well and just keep my, I'll just keep my, what do you call it, on my autopilot on. And I'll go ahead and I will manually land on the sucker. But you can see how it uh, it got me really close. So part of it is, again, like I said, you know, the um, station keeping is a little bit rambunctious just because um, it needs to be able to have enough have enough um, free movement of the control surfaces to operate with um, with 100% wind. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to manually come in. And so all I'm really doing here is I added a little bit of prop. I'm going to use the prop to try to maintain about 19 knots. And then I, I'll do pitch to uh, get the rest of the way there. And so here we go. I'm a little bit more precise, or I'm quite a bit more precise than the autopilot can be, so I also know what's going on a little bit quicker, I think, than it does, so. So, uh, we have Triton moving at 20 knots, about 20 knots, and there we go. So, we're not, there we go, we've grabbed both of them. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a, you know, some Lua stuff. Um, it's kind of pulling teeth, mostly because I, um, I had some issues with I accidentally connected my um, my GPS to where my keypad should go, and then I was struggling to figure that out. Thought it might have been something I screwed up with the Lua, and it wasn't. So, not the prettiest of Lua. I'll probably change some of the colors in here so it's a little less bright in here, but um, it's working really well. Um, what I want to do is I want to add a couple um, arrows here. Uh, I was struggling doing that. It kept giving me arrows. So I want to add a couple arrow, uh, arrows here so that I can uh, tap through pages. And so I'd like to make it so the frequency is on there and so I can actually key in the frequency. But I don't mind having a um, this up here for now at least. But it gave me some good sp – it cut out some space. Uh, that was nice. Um, definitely added some uh, some space and utility to this vehicle. But uh, definitely, um, you know, something nice to do, as you can see. Adds a lot of functionality to it, um, the ability to navigate via radio. Um, you know, I was starting to get to the point where I was running out of space, and this freed up a ton of space because everything on my bearing panel, which took up two slots, fits on here. As you can see, I get my bearing two. That took up three slots. The only thing I don't have is a, is a needle pointing towards it, which I never really used. Um, it's kind of a nice feature, but I never really used it, so maybe at some point I'll put a needle back on there, but um, 
you know, I don't really use it, so I might not. I'm trying to think what else I could do Lua-wise. So one thing I think I'm going to add is I'm going to add some arrows on this, uh, or at least a, two buttons probably, uh, two small buttons, and those will allow me to um, put a cross on there to better align or do uh, infrared, maybe. But yeah, so that's uh, definitely helpful doing that. All right, so I, let's see. At some point, I'll put a bunch of that stuff on on the Cormorant. Cormorant has all the autopilot in. Um, I'll essentially put the radio stuff. So I wanted to kind of have... Um, I wanted to get Katie up and running and get that on there, um, you know, before I kind of ported it over to other things. All right, let's uh, start grabbing some stuff, putting it away, and then we'll go in and... I just want to make sure everything's saved up. Because that would be ugly if I didn't save it up after I did all that work. But uh, it was certainly a bunch of work to get all that going. But as you can see, I'm starting to make some modules. Uh, get out of there. So I'm starting to make some modules. These are going to be the all the panels I need to get. So what I'm these are essentially going to be junk. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the final panel when Katie did when it's done. So uh, what I'll actually do is go in here. Um, I don't want to do too much building, but I want to go in here and see what the heck is up with this so this is um, this should be powered fine uh, so that's I'm just kinda cleaning it up because I moved stuff around so as you can see they're going up and down and up and down doing weird stuff I just wanna make sure everything's powered properly so that goes try to find where my so this goes to um, what I should do is have this go right here to the artificial horizon which is the main thing and then anything connected to the artificial horizon in the cockpit should be powered. I, I usually do that with a compass or artificial horizon, something centralized that it allows me to uh, know what I'm connected to. I just kind of clean some of this electricity up um, here. So that goes over here to, uh, that is the panel for the winches. That goes up to there. All right, and then this will go up to, Try to clean this up just a hair here. There we go. That's better. Um, that cleans that up. Puts that there. This one shoots across here. I think what I'm going to do instead is go right to the middle. And then that goes there. That goes there. Like that. All right. So that kind of cleans this panels up these panels up a little bit. Um, let me see. It might be a backlight issue. If it's just a backlight issue, I don't know what was up with it. And I'm not all that. See, yeah, the backlight's there. So backlight's not coming on, so it's probably a um, right here. And then that goes to master power. All right, so and then this needs to go to master power. All right, and so I'll figure out any other issues with this later, but I just kind of wanted to get it wrapped up before I forget Let's save that up. All right, so that's good. So now, um, you know, Triton, I have to set a frequency. So I think what Triton is probably going to have a static frequency. There's no point in me changing Triton's frequency all the time. Maybe you could just go to day here. So fog is off and back to day. So I'll give Triton a static frequency for now. Uh, what is this? I don't know what that is. That an on? That's got to be an on. Constant on. Where's that going? Okay, that's constant on for the transmit. That's frequency. And then I'll do a constant number. And this will just be a constant number. So Triton's going to have a discrete frequency that um, that's just one I used earlier. So that one's one I can remember. And we'll put this on there. And so now Triton has a frequency that um, you know we'll operate with. So go ahead and save that right there. So I did a bunch of work here, um, mostly in Katie did, but you know that was I think uh, time well spent. That really got us going for um, porting that system over to other stuff. So let's go back in. Um, Make this kind of a shorter video. Um, just kind of want to show that off, and uh, we'll go do something. 
um, get in the regular world and do a mission. So I'm trying to remember what how we finished. I can't remember. I have to see when we get in. I'll kind of be able to check it out. Uh, while we load in, a little reminder. Um, end of the month is the end, uh, is the last opportunity to um, nominate somebody's build or your own for the Stormy Awards on Endoskull Gaming's Discord. Um, I recommend you do that. That that's, uh, would be appreciated. And uh, go ahead and vote for some people. It's good to recognize everybody's work in the community and put some of your stuff on there. I'd love to see it. Um, all right, so we finished off here with uh, fixing the crash of the Cormorant. The Cormorant. Um, so one thing I think I'm going to do here is uh, I think I'll do it. Let me do this. This will be kind of cool. I'll, I'll, I'll have some checklists here. So let's um, – I'll make some drives and um, – yeah, I think I'll do some drive, and I'll uh, yeah. So I'll do a new Google Doc, and I'll kind of I'll show it to you. And so I'll make a bunch of checklists. Um, so you know, as somebody who was a commercial pilot, you know, and you know, did tons of that type of work, it's um, it's very helpful to have a checklist. Um, by going through your checklists, you really um, you catch a lot of problems, and the reason I crashed last time was I wasn't using a checklist. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to do the um, – um, I'll start making some checklists for each vehicle, um, especially the aircraft are going to need them. And so the way that it usually um, it usually start is with um, pre-flight. And let me just increase this up to – I'll do 24. Okay. And uh, with the pre-flight, and I'll, I'll do it like it is um, IRL. So I'll start with pre-flight, and then we'll do a checklist. And so see, I can check them and uncheck them, so every time I can go back and uncheck them. And so pre-flight, we're going to want to – all right, so pre-flight, we're going to want to check the um, – trying to think what we really want to do. So um, – Yeah, pre-flight. Pretty much don't need to do anything outside, so let's do pre-flight cockpit. All right, so pre-flight cockpit, we want to do uh, master power. Master power. We want to. Um, I'm kind of. Let's kind of let's bring up the cormorant, and I can kind of. Uh, you don't need to watch me make the checklist. You can kind of see um, how I'm setting this up. So one of the things that. Um, you do in, in aviation is you they call it a flow and so the flow is really helpful um, it's kind of a natural movement to go through the cockpit so you don't forget any parts and so you know you first start with your uh, pre-flight of the outside you look around now of course we don't really need to do that you check components and everything else you know or spawn on this fresh out of the bench we know it's not broken um, so we can go right in um, you know, it could put some fake stuff on there if I wanted, like, you know, checking engine oil, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, don't need to do any of that. And so let's go ahead and go in. And so the first thing I'm going to do is um, I pretty much sit in my seat, and I start by turning on my master power. So that was the first thing I put master power. Now I want to uh, kind of consult some gauges before I do anything else. So I want to go through, and I want to go down my um, – so a flow – one of the ways I set this aircraft up – and the way they tend to set up new modern aircraft, like old-timey aircraft, like things used to be everywhere. And it was a pain in the butt because, you know, they had to have cables and they had to have vacuum lines and they had to have all this stuff. Uh, modern stuff is more digital and things can be laid out better. And through years and years of, um, you know, study, they've realized that it's better to lay things out logically. And so I, I try to do this myself here. So, like, this is mostly my engine stuff. So I have manifold pressure, which is prop. Uh, pitch, RPM, uh, fuel time to empty, fuel gauge, gallons per hour, engine temperature, um, volts, low volts, battery, low battery. And so you'd start your flow over here, and you'd want to go through, and you'd want to, um, you know, we can set our prop pitch. So we'll do master power, uh, set prop pitch. All right, and then we will... Um, Go down. Um, actually, I'm going to do that. 
So I'll, I'll kind of do it a little bit more realistically. So we're going to go down and we check our fuel. So verify fuel. And so you want to verify that you have enough fuel for whatever you're doing. Um, we don't need to worry about time to empty, gallons per hour, or engine temp really. Uh, volts, you'd want to verify your volts. So check volts. All right, and then you want to check battery. I'm just going to bring up OBS here and fix something. All right, and so I'm going to, uh, next thing I'm going to do is check my battery. And so I'm just checking the battery for, um, make sure that we have plenty of battery. And if we look here, we have 100% battery, probably because I have, no, I don't have infinite electricity on. Um, we're just not using much. And so then um, you'd come across here and um, to get, so then, um, so that's your pre-flight. And then, um, let me s add something on there. So you'd also want to check um, master, oh, so first thing we actually want to do is this one before master power is uh, parking brake on. And so it start it defaults on. Um, and that's the first thing you do because often when you park an aircraft, especially on um, the ramp, you'll tie it down and you shut the brake off. Even in airliners, usually the brakes are off and they're chalked. Um, you don't want the brakes stuck on. Um, so you shut the, you uh, usually leave the brakes on, so you put them on. Uh, next thing we want to do is, you know, master power, verify fuel, check volts, check battery. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to do our... Um, so that checklist is complete. Once your checklist is complete, you go to the next one. And so the next one is the pre-start checklist. Or the, uh, we'll do the start checklist. All right, start checklist is going to be, so we want to get ready to start. So first thing we want to do is we actually want to turn on our beacon. Our beacon tells people around us that, um, as you can see, so if you see an airplane sitting on the ramp with the beacon flashing, that usually means that they're getting ready to start the engine. So it's a warning to people around um, the engine is going to start. All right, so beacon on, beacon on. Okay. Uh, after beacon is on, we want to go ahead and we'll get ready to start. So we want to um, do throttle idle, which it starts at. And so, um, you know, if I if I shut down with the throttle all the way up, I would actually want to make sure the throttle is set to idle. So next thing we want to do is go ahead and um, do engine start stop. We'll do select engine start slash stop. All right, so I'll go right through the checklist as I would I, um, IRL. I just have like 900 tabs open. That's why I'm clicking so much. All right, so that's starting. All right, so next thing we, we would want to do IRL is we would want to verify um, RPM. And so if I forgot to bring my throttle to idle, um, that would be above um, idle. So we verify our RPM. We want to verify, normally you'd verify things like oil pressure and temp. Um, we don't have any oil pressure, but uh, engine temp, so verify temp. By uh, engine temp. All right. Uh, once that's um, done, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, we want to verify our check volts. So we want to uh, check volts. Uh, volts. Okay. And now we are pretty much. So um, what we should be doing is making sure we're not discharging, which we're not. We're good. All right, so that's uh, pretty much our start checklist. Next, we want our taxi checklist. So it's a little bit, you know, RP, but um, this will also hopefully um, slow me down and prevent a crash again. So taxi checklist is getting you ready to um, take off, to taxi to take off. And so we'll go ahead and I'll start making that. So next thing you want to do is you want to... Um, uh, release parking brake, which would have um, saved me before. Release parking brake. All right. 
All right, release parking brake. So we're going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and release parking brake. All right, so that fixes that. Next, we want to um, set prop to takeoff, which is going to be 28.5, 28.5. All right, and so we go in here, and I'm going to start increasing the prop to 28.5. Alright, 28.5. Alright, and then I want to uh, test brakes. Test brakes. And so I'm just going to tap my spacebar. And as you can see, my brakes will bring me to a stop. So that's something you actually want to test just to make sure you don't have bad brakes because, you know, then you could pull the uh, prop back and you would stop in case you needed to. So test brakes. Alright, and so we'll taxi out to the end of the runway. So we want to put on our nav lights. Um, nav lights. Nav lights. All right, and so you want your nav lights on for taxi. So beacons on pre-start, and then nav lights on for taxi. All right, normally, you know, in real life, you'd run up your engine, you'd check your magnetos. Of course, we don't need to do any of that stuff, so I'm not going to bother putting it on there. I don't want to, you know, I don't need RP too much. So we're going to go to the end of the runway here. All right, but I do want to kind of get this a little bit more realistic. So we, I'm tapping my brakes. I would set the brake. All right, so um, taxi checklist. I think that's it for the taxi checklist. Um, actually, we'll add something to taxi checklist. So... Um, set course so off, often you do this um, you'd make sure that you um, you know you set your course where you're going so and when the taxi checklist is complete that's when you would um, actually taxi out so for example we'll set our uh, what is this oh fire let's make sure I wasn't on my war zone safe all right so we'd set our course in there as you can see course comes up um, that's in all right, and so that's probably about it for the taxi checklist. And then so um, we go to the takeoff checklist. Uh, take off. All right, and then um, let's go ahead and type that one in. All right, so things we need to do for takeoff. Uh, we have our prop is set. As you can see, we... We're push. We're sliding forward a little bit just because um, the brakes can't hold us with that much prop in. Um, we would want to um, gyro on off, on slash off. So this lets me decide flaps to take off, to take off. Um, let's see, strobes, uh, landing light. Landing lights. Um, I think that's it. So let's kind of just do that, and I can add some to it later. Strobes, landing lights, um, flaps to take off. All right, so we're ready to go, I think. Um, yep, that is it. All right, so we're good to go here. So let's go ahead and let's... Um, uh, strobes, landing lights, release parking brake. And while I'm sitting here, I'm going to do the um, takeoff checklist land. So this is on land. This is what caused my problem to start with. So I'm going to take this, do the same checklist here. And this is going to be for um, C or water. That ah, C's fine. Uh, gyro on off, flaps set to takeoff, strobes, landing lights, release parking brake. Um, that will get me uh, landing gear up. Our uh, landing lights, gear up, up, uh, release parking brake. So um, that's that would have saved me from having that crash if, because I took off in the water. I didn't sh shut my parking brake off. Um, see, like right now, I can't move with the parking brake on, so it's obvious to shut it off. But when you're in the water, it doesn't matter. And so um, that off, release parking brake on. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's um, start advancing some throttle here. And I'll start taxiing here. Okay, something's up. Okay, you know what it is? Um, I need to fix something. So my space bar is um, toggle. I need to fix that. 
So I'll go ahead and put that on my to-do list. Alright, and so my spacebar is toggle. That is no good. Alright. Uh, space is toggle. I have two lists going now. Alright, so let's just quickly finish this up here, and then we'll call it a video. So now we're ready for takeoff. Let's go ahead and we'll advance the throttle. And so I'm going to not use the gyro this time. Oh, whoa. Probably should have. <laughs> a little bit uh, shaky here. All right. Um, all right. So now we'll pause it here. And we'll go ahead and we'll go into the um, the climb checklist. So you do this on your climb out. I've been doing it weird because I haven't been following uh, proper procedure. Climb is going to be... Uh, first thing we want to do is uh, positive rate. So, positive rate just means we're climbing, we're not sinking still. Um, positive rate, gear up. So, gear up is the first thing you want to do um, because it it's a lot of drag. So, gear is going up. Second thing we want to do is flaps up, or let's say above um, 100 knots flaps up. Usually, um, IRL, you have a speed, you'll say, above a certain speed because you don't want to lose the lift you get from your flaps. Over 100 knots, we have plenty of lift. We don't, uh, we don't want the drag. So, um, so we'll do greater than 100 knots. Flaps up. Pause the rate gear up. Uh, greater than 100 knots, flaps up. All right, and then let's uh, go ahead and resume. And so that's pretty much it for our climb. Um, oh, let's. Um, Make sure we're actually climbing. All right. Just click the gyro on for a second. All right, so that's pretty much our climb. Uh, cruise checklist is next. Cruise. So cruise checklist is going to be, um, let's see. I'm going to quickly come back and try to... I'm going to put an altitude in here so I'm not scud running all day. Let's put it to 1,000 feet. And where's my AP Master? AP Master, there we go. So that will climb us out. Uh, heading hold, what's my heading? 268. 268. All right, so uh, cruise. Um, let's see, cruise is um, set prop and set throttle. Right, set prop, set um, throttle. So you essentially just set it to what you want. Um, so that's cruise. I'll try to go through this quick, it's probably boring people, but um, it's kinda how you do it and this is how you uh, prevent yourself from getting in a bad situation like I did. So we do descent checklist. Descent is gonna be um, See what we have on our descent checklist. So we want, okay, um, cruise or climb. We want to also um, landing lights off. All right, landing lights off. And then I don't think we want any other lights off. So landing lights off, strobes, beacon, and nav stay on. So that's the only thing left on there. It's set prop, set throttle for cruise. Descent is um, we'd want to. Uh, again, set prop and throttle. Set prop and throttle. Um, approach. All right, approach is important. This is when we're going to verify a bunch of things to make sure we're all set up for landing. So we're going to do approach land. And then we'll do one approach water. So approach land is going to be... Um, we want to... Uh, uh, landing light. Uh, landing light will do last because uh, usually what we used to do in the airlines was landing light meant we were clear to land. Um, so approach, we're going to uh, approach to land. We want to do um, gear down, down, uh, flaps, set, set for landing. You don't always use full flaps, so that's why you do flap set for landing, not a specific flaps amount. Depends on the airplane. Uh, flap set for landing. Um, gear down. Let's do gear down, parking brake off. 
parking brake off. So we verify parking brake off. Verify parking brake off. Flap set for landing. Um, let's see, do we need anything else? I don't think so. Nope. So uh, we would do uh, landing light. Landing light. All right, so landing light's ready to land. And so the only difference for the water, I'm going to copy that and I'll put that down. I'll show you this list when I'm done here. Okay, so approach uh, C. All right, we want uh, gear up instead of down. Gear up. Verify parking brake off. We want the parking brake off. That's in case I put them down. I'm going to go uh, up on a beach or on, a, on the ramp there. I want that brake off. Uh, flap set for landing, landing light on. All right, landing light on. All right, and so that's pretty much approach C done. And we're almost done here. Just trying to get uh, be thorough here. Um, and then we'll do a um, shutdown procedure. Or we'll do a taxi. Yeah, taxi, you need to do a taxi in as well. So taxi in is going to be... Um, do strobes. Off. Um, I think that's probably it. Strobes off. Um, then we do shut down. Shut down. Is going to be... Um, throttle idle to idle and then we want to do prop to um, zero prop feather which is zero uh, zero so prop feather prop to zero um, we want to set brake set park brake Set park brake, um, engine start slash stop, um, engine start stop, and then we want to do we um, see nav beacon nav slash beacon off nav off nav and beacon off. And so I'm just trying to be thorough here, and I'll, I'll include this when I um, release it. Okay, now beacon off, and master power off. We'll do uh, interior lights off, interior lights off, and then we want to do master off, and then we're pretty much secured, I think, at that point. Um, that's all we need to do. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's see where we are, and I'll do a quick landing here. Um, I'm going to, let me see, we're in a career world, where am I? Uh, we left military base, we should be there, let me look uh, here, so time to waypoint, um, we're not going to the waypoint, so who knows how far we are from there. We have to be close, so uh, flaps are up, that's set. I'm going to go speed up. So I didn't uh, go full throttle because I didn't want to eat up too much terrain. So here we go. Um, so I'm trying to see where I am. I don't, I'm not going to make us wait here too long. I'm going to, if uh, it's going to take us too long, we're going straight to it now. It might be pretty quick once I get uh, lined up. But um, yeah, so that's the that's a good way to, to kind of keep yourself from having issues is to actually have a checklist like you would in real life. Uh, you know, that we used to say that, you know, a lot of the regulations were written in blood, and that was because, you know, people got hurt or killed because, um, you know, of mistakes made and bad procedures, and so that's when they often would, um, you know, change procedures to, um, you know, be better so that people wouldn't uh, end up killing themselves by accidentally um, crashing. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to put in a new heading here. So we'll be there in a couple minutes. Uh, it's only three minutes uh, to landing, so um, start going through the checklist. So um, 
let me double check it. So we'll go through the, um, where are we at? So we're pretty much in our cruise phase. Um, I need to check my landing lights. Landing lights are off. Cruise, set prop throttle, we're set. Um, descent, set prop throttle, that's fine. All right, so approach. Um, we are three, four, three minutes and 40 seconds out. So I descended us, so we're coming down. Um, so as I approach to land here, um, again, we're in the fog like we were last time. So we need to be careful. So I'm coming right to the end of this runway, so I should be able to go right in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start slowing down a little bit. We're all yeah. I'll, I'll keep the speed up for a little bit. Once we get within a minute, I'm going to I'm going to set up for uh, our approach. So I kind of want to think ahead of the airplane. Um, one of the things that caused my crash last time was I was in the fog. When you have low visibility, you need to set up early, earlier so that you're all set. Um, so I'm going to wait till about a minute out. I'm going to slow down to about. Um, 100 knots, I'm going to put down my um, gear, my flaps, and then I'm uh, going to um, tr come in an approach speed about 80 knots. Um, so I want to, you know, parking brake, as you can see, is released. And we'll go through all those checklists. So descent's fine, and we have approach to land. We're going to land on the land. Yeah, let's see, we're, we're two minutes out, so I'll, I'll just finish up by landing. So it's a good thing to get a checklist going. Um, this is going to save me crashes, and this is going to go through, and it's going to, there's a reason why people use checklist IRL, is they're just very important, and so I'm going to use them in here, so a little bit of RP, but it's also, it, it um, it's going to save me from crashing, and, you know, I've never killed my character in this. If my character dies, I'm starting that over again, that, you know, I'm not saving, essentially. I'm going to, whatever progress I had, that episode is lost, you know, I'll keep the episode, but... Whatever progress um, is saved is lost because, you know, I'm not going to allow respawn. And so um, I've yet to die, and so part of it is being extra cautious. All right, so let's start slowing down. We're only a minute and a half out. I'm going to go down around, um, we'll say under 120. Uh, I'll go ahead and put our gear down. Parking brake is off. Flaps are coming in. All right, and the flaps get wallowy here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So I have to add a bunch of power with my flaps in. Um, because of, uh, you know, we'll stall. And so I want to take out my altitude hold. I want to hand fly this. I'm going to actually take the autopilot off altogether here. Um, and I'm going to take the gyro off. And I'm going to hand fly it in. Uh, what's my 075? 075. So we're still coming right at the runway here. I'm coming in fast, so I'm starting to slow down. Um, I, I just got us way too slow there. So we're about um, about a minute and a half out. Still coming in about 7-4, 7-4. So we're perfectly on there. I can, I'm can i kind of like just visually looking to keep myself on course. So I'm going to come in, keep coming in about 100 knots. And then as I get close, I'll start slowing down more. I don't want it to take forever. And so I could put the gyro on if I wanted. Um, Let's go ahead and actually take that off, and I'm going to leave the um, gyro on. Gyro doesn't do a good job once the um, speed is low, so I actually have pretty good visibility. I can see where the airport is already, so I'm going to go ahead and take the gyro off, and I'll, I will hand fly. Uh, the wind is actually kicking up. If you look at where our wind is, that's one important thing you need to know, is uh, we're actually landing in a direct left crosswind. Um, so we're pretty much in like one of the worst case scenarios of wind is it's coming from our left and blowing this way in the uh, Stormworks War Zone episode. Um, the crosswind was so bad it was at, at 80 knots. And so if you have an 80 knot crosswind, you would not land. You would go find another airport that has a runway that's... Okay, so we are off uh, course here. We're going to correct. I'm going to start slowing down. I don't want to come in fast. I want to come in at 80 knots. With, with this, this aircraft has a lot of flaps. And so with this much flaps, I can go nice and slow. Uh, we also have a wind, you know, that we actually have a little bit of a headwind here. Um, it's kind of a quartering uh, headwind. And so um, I have to be careful that I, um, I can actually go pretty slow. And so I'm going to kind of straighten up. A little bit ugly, but um, we should be all right here. Should, I know. All right. Gorgeous. Um, center line could use some work, but I'm just going to, Tap, double tap the uh, space bar because I think I uh, have toggle set up on my 
brakes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I need to just cut the, uh, I bring the prop back. You can see how I was saying before, I can turn, you know, like 90 degrees. I can use that with a tail dragger. And so um, we're all set there. So let's go ahead and follow the checklist. So we taxied in already. Um, so we, I didn't turn on my landing light. Um, I got distracted again. Um, so gear was down, verified park brake was off. I did that. Flaps were set for takeoff and landing light was the only thing I forgot. Again, reason why I have a checklist. Uh, then we would want to go to taxi. So we want to set um, landing lights and strobes off. I forgot to put that on the list, so I'll put that on there. So landing lights and strobes are off. Uh, landing lights and strobes are off. And then for shutdown, I want to make sure my engine's all the way to idle. So I'm going to hold my down arrow until that goes all the way to idle. Um, prop feather, I want to go to zero on the prop or close to it. Uh, set parking brake. Parking brake is already set. Uh, engine start stop. All right, engine start stop. Uh, beacon is off. Uh, nav lights are off. Uh, interior light is already off. And we do master power. All right, so that's uh, having a procedure, having a checklist is going to just make things a lot safer. Um, you know, even with it, I forgot something, but it was luckily something minor. So I think that was a nice little flight. Um, you know, uh, kind of made up for me doing the crash by doing the right thing and, and coming up with a checklist and some procedures for it. Um, so I think that's good. And, um, you know, I'm not going to make you suffer through. I didn't put the flaps up. All right, so shut down. Uh, taxi flaps up. Flaps up. Okay. All right, so again, this is why we have a checklist is I forgot to do it. And so um, that helps. So yeah, so I'm going to come up with procedures. I'm not going to make you suffer through it again, but I think it's kind of a good little thing to uh, see is, uh, you know, what a real checklist should look like. All right, so if you enjoyed the episode, uh, please give it a like. And if you have yet to subscribe and you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. And we'll see you in the next one.